Welcome all the children for Guru Gedra educational program. Today we are going to learn an interesting lesson animal classification. Animals. Who are the animals you know? It is a very familiar word. From your childhood you know various type of animals. Who are the animals in your house? Who are the animals in the home garden? When you go to a trip to a forest, who are the animals you see? Okay, let's watch this video clip. Yes, you can see birds. They are flying in the sky. Various types of birds. They have various adaptations. Fish living in aquatic environments. Swimming here and there and their mode of locomotion is different and there are some small creatures in soil. Now see how they locomote. They are very important organisms. Not only these organisms, there are some other organisms in soil. Now see this animal, lion. It is a big animal. When you go to a trip to a forest, you can see this type of big animals. Elephant. And some animals are walking alone. These animals also same. They are living alone. But some animals are living as group. Can you remember such animals? They take various type of food. Now see this small creature. You might have seen this in your home garden. So they have various adaptations. Do you know the name of this animal? It is snail. So it has two antennas. This is another animal in the forest. So it is a herbivore animal. And it is living in herds. Now see the group of deers. Now you have an idea regarding the animals around us. Who are the other animals you can see? Just small animals, big animals. And see these apes, monkeys. So now you have an idea regarding all these animals. So they don't have same features. They don't have same body size. They are different in size. Their mode of locomotion is different. Therefore, we have to group these animals. Grouping animals is called as classification. What is classification? Even in your house, we classify various things. So I can uh, give you a simple definition. Classification is grouping things. In your house, you group certain things as furniture, as clothes, as food. Even in the school, students can be grouped as classes, as subjects, as their abilities. Likewise, animals can be classified based on their common features. It is called as animal classification. So, let us look on to the definition of animal classification. Categorizing animals in a systematic way by considering their common features is called as animal classification. How do we classify animals? Animals can be classified basically into two main groups. Invertebrates. Who are invertebrates? They don't have a backbone. Second one, vertebrates. Who are vertebrates? Animals have backbone. What is this backbone? Okay. Let's 
look at this backbone of certain animals. Backbone is called as the vertebral column. There you can see backbones of certain animals. This backbone is made up of bones. You can see a long bone along their back. It is called as backbone or vertebral column. Based on this feature, we can classify these animals into two main groups. Invertebrates, they do not have a backbone and we can divide them into further four groups. Nidaria, Annelida, Mollusca, Arthropoda. Vertebrates, animals with backbone. Piscis, Amphibia, Reptilia, Aves, Mammalia. Okay, now we are going to discuss these groups one by one. Invertebrates. Who are these invertebrates? I told you earlier they do not have a backbone. Can you see these nidarians in the screen? Bugs, small spiders like insects, snails, starfish, butterfly and some more. First group of invertebrate is nidaria. Who are these nidarians? You can see two examples on the screen. Hydra, jellyfish. Hydra and jellyfish, they are living in sea. You can see some more examples. Sea anemone, coral polyps. All these organisms are aquatic organisms. They are living in aquatic environments. What are the special features of this group, Nidaria? Let us have a look on special features of Nidaria. First one, Nidarians have radially symmetrical body. What is radial symmetry? Radial symmetry is dividing the body into two equal halves along several axes. Okay, I will explain it. I have a small umbrella. There you can see various axes in this umbrella. I can divide this umbrella into two equal halves along this one axis. It means if I take this axis, the umbrella can be divided into two equal halves. If I take this axis, again umbrella can be divided into two equal halves. Likewise, I can divide this umbrella into two equal halves along these axis. These axis are along the radius of the umbrella. Therefore, this is called as radial symmetry. I will explain it once again. I have a ball. There you can see four axes. This is one vertical axis and I can divide this ball into two equal halves using this vertical axis. And I can use this axis to divide the ball into two equal halves. Therefore, along the radius, I can divide this ball into two equal halves. So, this has radial symmetry. Okay, I will show you another one. This is also another ball. So, you can see the axis clearly. So, you can use this axis and you can divide the ball into two equal halves. So, this object has radial symmetrical body. Okay, now I am going to show you bilateral symmetry. What is bilateral symmetry? If you can divide the 
ball umbrella uh, into two equal halves using several axes, you can divide this animal into two equal halves by several axes. When considering this animal, you have only one axis to divide this animal into two equal halves. It is this vertical axis. Therefore, only one axis but two equal halves. This type of symmetry is called as bilateral symmetry. When taking human beings, if you want to separate our body into two equal halves, we have only one axis that is our vertical axis. So, only one axis, two equal halves that is bilateral symmetry. You can see it in the slide. This is radial symmetry and bilateral symmetry. There you can see several axes in the starfish and only one axis in the housefly. It is bilateral symmetry and radial symmetry. So, all the Nidarians have radial symmetrical body. Okay, let us move to the second feature. Yes, they have two types of body forms, polyp form, medusa form. Polyp form, it is always attached to a surface. They can't move here and there. They don't show the locomotion. Medusa form, it is free living organism. So, Nidarians show both these polyp form and medusa form. Okay. Nidarians have special tentacles and use them for trapping food. Tentacles, what are these tentacles? They are fingers like projections. They use these tentacles to catch their prey. All these Nidarians act as predators. Okay, now we are going to watch another video regarding Nidarians. Yes, you can see sea anemone and there are a lot of tentacles in sea anemone. This is another type of sea anemone and see how they are moving here and there. They can't locomote. They are fixing to a surface. All this hydra sea anemone, they are in marine environment. Tentacles, number of tentacles are there in sea anemone and corals. They use these tentacles to catch a prey. You can see clearly how they catch a prey. They use tentacles. They are our poisonous glands. They use poisonous to paralyze the prey. That is the main reason they are having tentacles. And jellyfish, it is a medusa form. So, it can locomote freely. It is swimming in the sea. So, you can see the radial symmetry of jellyfish. They also have tentacles. They use tentacles to catch the prey. Okay. Now, we are going to move to the next group of invertebrates, Anelida. Have you seen this creature in your home garden? Who is this creature? It is earthworm. You can see small parts in its body. So, it is using muscles for the locomotion. It is in your home garden. And see how it is moving in soil. Who are the other organisms in Nanelida? 
Yes, this is another organism in Annelida. Who is this creature? It is leech. When you travel to cold areas like Nuorelia, Hatton, you can see this organism. What are the special features of Annelida? Okay, let's look some more examples of Annelida. Earthworm, leech, nereis. Earthworm and leech you can see in terrestrial environment, but nereis you can't see in the terrestrial environment. Leech, nereis is living in aquatic environments. Okay, let's look at the features of Anlida. They live in marine freshwater as well as in wet soil. Yes, you know it. Earthworm, normally it is living in damp soil. When you dig the ground, especially in moist places, you can see earthworms. Their body is bilaterally symmetrical. I think now you know what is bilateral symmetrical. Their body can be divided into two equal halves along one axis. Third one, they are vermiform worm like body shape they have long body elongated body it is vermiform body they have segmented body what is segmented body you can see the segments in their body segments are small parts you can see in the body the whole body is segmented or dividing into small parts internally and externally. Therefore, these organisms are called as segmented worms. Okay, let's move to the next group of invertebrates. Yes, can you identify this organism? It is octopus. It is in marine environment. Who are the other mollusca in marine environment? This is squid. Normally we call it as cuttlefish. It is swimming in the sea. Yes, what are the other mollusca you know? There are bivalves. Some other creatures in the sea and some are in terrestrial environment. This is snail. It is in terrestrial environment. There you can see wet skin. It is called as moist skin. Okay. These are the examples for mollusca. Snail, octopus, squid or cuttlefish, bivalves and there are some more. When you are in the sea beach, you can see these bivalves. They are attaching to a surface, especially they are attaching to a stones or rocks in the sea beach. What are the special features of mollusca? They live in terrestrial environment and aquatic environment. They have bilaterally symmetrical body. Their skin moist with mucus. Mucus, it is water like substance secreted by their skin. Sometimes you might have seen when a snail locomoting or gliding on the ground, you see this mucus line. Some mollusca have shells, snail and bivalves. What are the other features of mollusca? They have soft body and 
known as soft bodied animals. Soft body, yes, you can see the soft body. The best example is slug. Normally, in rainy days, slugs are going here and there in the ground. Sometimes they are in your house. So, they have only muscles in their body. They have a muscular foot. That is the unique feature of mollusca. Okay, now we will move to the next group of invertebrates. Arthropoda. Have you seen these arthropods earlier? Some arthropods are living in sea. Some are living in air. Some are living in terrestrial environment. Arthropods are most abundant organisms in the environment. Insects, they are in this arthropod group. Here you can see lobster, crab and some other arthropods in the sea. What are the special features of these arthropods? They have jointed appendages. You can see they are jointed appendages. And they have external skeleton. They do not have a backbone. Therefore, they have external skeleton. Who are the arthropods in your house? Spider, scorpion. They are very common in your house, sometimes in your home garden. Prawns. It is another common arthropod in the sea. Mosquito, butterfly, housefly. They are arthropods and they are insects. All the insects come under the group of arthropods. What are the special features of arthropoda? They live in terrestrial and aquatic environments. They are the most abundant group of animals in the environment. They are bilaterally symmetrical. Some arthropods have wings. It means they are insects. What are the other features? They have external skeleton. It is called as exoskeleton. Have you seen the exoskeleton of arthropods? See the exoskeleton of prawn. So normally when you eat prawns, you remove the exoskeleton. It is made up of chitin. This is the exoskeleton of crab. So it is made up of calcium carbonate. As they do not have a vertebral column, they use this exoskeleton to attach muscles. Okay, we will move to the another feature of arthropoda. Normally, we can see three tagmas in the body. What are these three tagmas? Head, thorax and abdomen. Every arthropod has these three tagmas. Head, thorax and abdomen. Sometimes, some of these tagmas are not prominent but all have these three tagmas. They have jointed appendages. It is the unique feature of arthropoda. Okay, you can see the jointed appendages of arthropoda. Due to this exoskeleton, arthropods can't move here and there. When they move, when they locomote, they need to bend their legs and hands. They need to bend their limbs. To bend their limbs, 
they use these jointed appendages. It is the unique feature of group arthropoda. Okay, now we have completed the first part of the lesson that is invertebrates. Can you remember the group of invertebrates you learn? Yes, Nidaria, Annelida, Mollusca, Arthropoda. What are the common examples of Nidaria? Once again, Nidaria, Jellyfish, Coral Polyps, Hydra, Annelida. What are the examples of Annelida? Earthworm, Leech and Nereis. Third group, Mollusca, Octopus, Cuttlefish, Snail, Bivalves. Fourth one, Arthropoda, Spider, Scorpion, Cockroach and so on. Okay, now we will move to the second half of the lesson that is vertebrates. Who are the vertebrates around you? You can give number of examples for vertebrates even in your house. Cat, dog, rats, all are vertebrates. Okay, can you remember the group of vertebrates I mentioned earlier? Okay, we'll look at the first group of vertebrates that is Piscis. Piscis, normally we call them as fish. They are aquatic organisms. They live in either freshwater environment or marine water environment. How they locomote? What are the special features of these organisms? See, they locomote by their fins. The main method of locomotion is swimming. They use different types of fins for the locomotion. And their body is covered with scales that is for the protection. There are various type of piscis, various type of fish, small one, big ones. Okay, let us look at examples of piscis. Tilapia, tuna, shark, small fish. Yes, what are the common features of piscis? The body is covered with scales. You can see different colored scales. That is for the beauty as well as for the protection. These scales are little bit hard. Therefore, scales give them mechanical protection. They have fins. They have different types of fins for locomotion. They use these fins for balance the body and they change the direction using the fins. How do they breathe when they are in the water? Yes, they do not have lungs like human beings. They have gills. Have you seen the gills of fish? Yes, definitely you may see the gills. So, gills are red in color. It is covered with operculum. They use dissolved oxygen through these gills. Next one, they possess eyes without eyelids. Yes, next feature. It is the unique feature of Piscis. Their body is invariably streamlined. It is called as streamlined body. It is very important for the locomotion. What is this streamlined body? It is the body pointed with both ends. You can see it clearly in the slide. The mouth is pointed and the tail is pointed. It is called as 
streamlined body. It always helps for the locomotion of the fish. Okay, next vertebrate group amphibia. Amphibia. Who are the main organisms in amphibia? Frog. See the skin of this frog? It is moist. This is another creature, salamander. This is also salamander. Frog, toad and salamander. They are the three main creatures in amphibia. What are the special features of amphibia? They legs in water. They need water. They need water to complete their life cycle. See the tadpoles. Hatching eggs, tadpoles are produced. It is the second stage of the life cycle. Yes, these are the main examples for amphibia. Todd, frog, salamander. Sometimes you might have seen frogs in your house. They have wet skin. Salamander, it is difficult to see in some places in the house. They are in the forest. They also have wet skin. Yes, what are the other features of animals in amphibia? Their skin is thin. It is glandular. Always these glands produces mucus. They use their skin for the breathing. Second feature, some species use limbs for locomotion. Yes, salamander uses limbs for locomotion and frogs also but when it is in water they use fingers as oars they are called as web feet they have several respiratory organs when they are in water they use skin they use moist skin amphibians when they are in terrestrial environment, they use lungs as well as buccal cavity. Buccal cavity means the mouth cavity. They use, sometimes you might have seen frogs, they always move their neck part. They always move in the neck part. So that is respiration. That is using the buccal cavity for their respiration. Next one, they undergo metamorphosis. What is metamorphosis? So they show several stages in their life cycle. When considering these stages, their body shape is completely different. You can see eggs, tadpoles and adult frog. They are the three main stages in the life cycle. All the amphibians have this type of life cycle. It is called as metamorphosis. Okay, now we'll move to the next one that is reptilia. When you hear the word reptilia, who can remember? Snakes, normally. We call them as snakes. All the snakes are reptilia. Who are the other organisms coming under this group? There are reptilians with legs. Some 
legless there you can see tortoise they are legged reptilians snakes can you see the body of the snake it is covered with dry scales and see how they are locomote they use scales for gliding crawling the main method of locomotion is crawling there are some other small reptiles in the environment most probably they are living in dry environment there are various type of snakes yes you can see this type of creature even in your house it is gecko and lizard and this is another reptile that is turtle reptiles legs it is the first stage of their life cycle yes what are the features of reptilia the main feature is dry skin and scales all the reptilians have very dry skin right okay let's have a look on the common reptilia you can see in the environment snakes lizard crocodile tortoise python gecko some more yes what are the special features of reptilia the main feature is having dry skin dry skin with scales so scales always protect the body the body is covered with scales they have a dry skin because they don't have glands in the skin no glands and no mucus therefore they have a dry skin some reptiles use limbs for their locomotion example you have seen tortoise lizard gecko they have limbs for their locomotion but there are limbless reptilia who are these limbless reptilia snake python viper like snakes they don't have limbs the main method of locomotion is crawling or gliding they have lungs for respiration they don't have gills although they are living in water sometimes you might have seen water snakes that is for a short period of time water is not necessary for completing the life cycle so they have only lungs for their breathing okay next one aves aves birds what are the birds you know yes there are a lot of birds you can see in your home garden small ones big ones and see some birds can't fly there are some big birds they can't fly because of their heavy body here also you can see such birds some are living in water yes what are the special features of these birds the main feature is their feathers their body is covered with feathers and the next one their beak 
yes. These are the common examples for birds. You know all these examples. Crow, parrot, ostrich, hummingbird. What are the features of aves? The main feature is streamlined body. It is pointed body. Both front and the back are pointed. It is very helpful for their locomotion. Streamlined body. For it is a common feature of fish also. The main method of locomotion is flying. But I told you there are several birds they can't fly. Ostrich, penguin, emu and cassowary. Why do they can't fly? They have heavy body. Their body is heavier than other birds. The birds, their body is covered with feathers. It is very helpful their locomotion. The main method of locomotion is flying. To fly in the air, they need a light body. How do they make the body light? By trapping air inside the feathers. Therefore, feathers are very important for their locomotion. Next feature. They have limbs for locomotion. I told you, some birds can't fly. At that moment, they use limbs for their locomotion. They have hind limbs and fore limbs. Their fore limbs are adapted for wings. Their hind limbs are remain as legs. Fourth feature. Birds do not have teeth. They have a beak. Sometimes you might have seen they use this beak for their feeding. When they eat fruits, they use this beak. When they eat another type of food, they use this beak. It is little bit hard. Therefore, they can use this beak for their feeding type. Okay. Next one. This is the last group of vertebrates, mammalia. This is very important because all human beings come under this group. Mammals. What do you mean by mammals? They have special glands secreted milk. They are called as mammary glands. Okay, let's look at this video clip. Yes. Mammals. Can you remember these mammals in our environment? There are small ones, small mammals and some mammals are flying. Yes. When you travel to a trip, when you travel to a forest, you can see all these mammals in the forest. Some are in the sea. They have fur coat. What is this fur coat? Yes, that is another mammal in the forest. Monkeys. We have close relationship with monkeys. Whales. It is the largest mammal in the world. Yes, this is another mammal. You can see the fur coat well. And another mammal carrying child, carrying small babies. Different types of mammals in the forest. The main feature of mammals is taking care of their children.
Yes. What are the other features of these mammals? Monkeys, apes, tigers, all are come under these mammals. Right. Now we will look at the most common mammals living around us. We can see in our environment, lion, tiger, they are in the forest, cat, dog, they are in the house and some more. Okay. These are the features of mammal. Number one, that is have mammary glands. It is the main feature of mammals. What is mammary glands? It is a special type of gland secreted milk. So, milk is the main food that mammals nourish their babies. Therefore, it is very important feature in mammals. All the mammals nourishing their babies by meal and they take care of this, their children. Second one, they have sweat glands, sebaceous glands in their skin. And there are hairs in the skin. It is very helpful for controlling body temperature. Sometimes you might have seen the whole body is covered with hairs. Okay, the next feature is possess external ears. Ears, that is another unique feature of mammals. External ear lobes. Other organisms do not have external ear lobes. They have only small holes as their ears, but mammals have external ears. It is a sensory organ and they use these external ear lobes to catch various sounds in the environment. Next feature, all the mammals have lungs for breathing, even the whale it has lungs. How does this whale use lungs for respiration? So always the whale comes to the surface of the sea and take atmospheric oxygen. And whale store this atmospheric oxygen in the body and always coming to the surface goes down, coming to the surface goes down. So they don't have gills they have lungs for respiration. Okay, now we will move to the summary of the lesson. Can you remember the groups of invertebrates you learn? Nidaria, Annelida, Mollusca, Arthropoda. What are the vertebrates group you learn? Piscis, Amphibia, Reptilia, always mammals. What are the unique features of these groups? That is very much important. Yes, my dear children, let's look at the unique features of each group. Nidaria, what is the unique feature of Nidaria? It is radial symmetry, radially symmetrical body. Second one, Annelida. The unique feature is segmented body. Third one, Mollusca. I told you they have a muscular foot. It is the unique feature of Mollusca. Okay, next one, Arthropoda. The main feature is jointed appendages jointed appendages. Okay, now we will move to the 
unique features of vertebrate groups. Piscis, streamlined body and fins. Both these features are important for the locomotion. Second one, amphibia. The unique feature is moist skin and skin with glands. Next group, reptilia. Unique feature is having scales. The whole body is covered with scales. Next group, avis. The unique feature is have feathers and beak. Last one, mammalia. The unique feature is have memory glands. Yes, I think you have learn various special features of animals and you know how to classify animals based on their common features. You have learned several groups of animals, main groups, two main groups of animals based on vertebral column. So, I think this was an interesting lesson for you. Now, when you go to the environment, you see various type of animals and you can identify these animals and you can tell about the groups of these animals. So I will hope you in next lesson. Thank you.